afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to that here show. A story is written by a current prisoner with your favorite journalist, Tony. You know, we're going to go ahead and dive right into it and waste no time whatsoever. Since we were talking about Long Beach, I only feel it's, uh, it's necessary that we bring an opposing side, an opposing voice, so they can give their side of things. Anybody is more than welcome to share their story on this show. You can email me, Mr. Tony Journalist at gmail.com. Mr. Tony Journalist at gmail.com and I will email you back promptly. You know what I'm saying? The powder show, man, it's on and cracking, man. For those of you who want to listen to him on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, then that is for you. I know it's not for everybody and that's all good, but don't even worry about it because your boy got you covered. So please hit that like button on your way out. Please hit that like button on your way out and help your boy get noticed right here. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, let's get it cracking, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Let me call you. Uh, my real name or the gang name? You can go ahead and say both. Uh, my real name is Joey Mayava, and my alias is the Little Evil Crip. What are you incarcerated for, and how long is your sentence? Uh, I'm incarcerated for aggravated mayhem, street criminal, gang activity, and second degree robbery uh, with prison fires. For the people who are not, um, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said, and I've been down since 2007, and I have a total of 24 years to do, and I'm almost done. For the people who who are not really up to par with the terminology within the court system and whatnot, man, would you be able to explain to them uh, what mayhem is real quick before we proceed? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Mayhem is when somebody cuts off a body part or mangles or defends or um, does anything to alter the body as far as hurting them. So what I did was cut off somebody's ear. So they Where are you from right now? The that mayhem. I'm from Long Beach. Do you or did you belong to any type of gangs, groups, or organizations? Say it one more time. Do you or did you belong to any type of gangs, groups, or organizations? Yes, I did. I belong to SOS, Sons of Samoa. They're a Samoan Crip gang out of Long Beach. Most definitely, my friend. You know, I want to go ahead and thank you so much, sir, for taking the time out of your day and, and being able to share your story, your experience, on what you experienced on those cold, mean streets of Long Beach, my friend. As we all met, as we all know, man, Long Beach is no joke. It is literally a war zone. And unfortunately, um, I hate to say it, but but it, there, there's race wars going on over there, man. There's Spanish against uh, Hispanics, Hispanics against Asians, uh, Samoans against um, Hispanics, yeah. and, and, and vice versa, man. It's, it's, it's very unfortunate, man, but... Would you be able to tell me, man, um, about um, the Sons of Samoa, man, of how they ended up starting and a little background about so they them? Started in, they, started, they started back in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, they started off with four founders, one of them being my dad. They called him Joker, another dude named Joe Fob, another dude named Ace, and Evil, which is my dad's brother. They started off when they came from the island, they seen how the culture was, they seen it was gang activities, they seen that everybody stayed to their own nationalities, and Mexicans were Mexicans, blacks were blacks, and the Asians were Asians, so they wanted to start their own movement. So that brought forth Sons of Samoa, SOS, uh, pretty much. And in the 80s, they flourished. The 90s, we grew bigger and bigger. And in 2000, it just blew up into both, all sides of Long Beach, the east, the north, and the west. So basically, it's been generations and generations just passed down to us. I grew up in the lifestyle because I was born into it. Real quick question. Um, do you guys get along with, with the Asians? with the Asian gangs around there, like uh, we, the Tiny Rascals or the Asian Boys or whatnot? Uh, we don't, yeah. We get along with the Asian Boys. We get along with the Suicidal. We get along with the Exotic Family. We get along with uh, certain Asians, but we don't get along with TRG. May I ask why? Because uh, they're, 
they're gang beefs with Asian boys and our our allies. Cause you know it's about that uh, saying, uh, a friend of my friend is a my friend of my enemy is a friend of mine, something like that. I forget the saying. But yeah, they beef with people that we get along with, and we're clicked up with the Asian boys. So they beef with them, we beef with them. So. Are you aware of the SEA Alliance? If I'm not mistaken, it's a suicidal, yeah. it's the exotic crib. And suicidal, it's Asian exotic, crib. Asian boy. Yes. Yep, I'm tapped into the street still, and yeah, I'm aware of it. Would you be able to tell me um, how, how that formulated, and what, was it always like that? Say one more time. Would you be able to tell me how that started, and was it always like that? At what point in time were, were they were they actually rivals? So, uh, 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 QRG and Asian Boys were the first Asian gangs out there, and um, you know we uh, they just branched off. They supposedly I don't know too much about the, their history as far as I just know that the founders of QRG they moved to Long Beach and started QRG out there. Back in the day, I'm not sure what year, but there was the it was a dude that was Cambodian, and another dude that was Cambodian that started Asian Boys and TRG. They were cool, I guess they were cousins supposedly, and then something happened behind behind drugs and, and the female, and they branched off a war, started with them too. And then this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Suicida was born from the Laos homie that came from Laos, he started his own little thing because of the uh, boys' uh, suicidal town in Venice Beach. They liked it what they represented, so they bring that to the city. That's how suicidal was born. But yeah, they've been beating for a while. What's the funk that's going on with, with, with like, Hispanic gangs, with, like, Barrio Pobre and, like, Isa Longo and, and all those gangs? Like, how did it start? Oh, uh, from what from what I understand, it's, it's been about taxes and money-making. You know, one hood makes more money than the other hood, and they pay their dues to who they got to pay, and the other one doesn't. They don't want to align themselves with each other, so they see that they're getting outnumbered by just certain nationalities of gangs, and they just don't want to be part of that funk. So I'm not sure too much about them. All I know is the feud that we got going on with them. I can't speak for the in-house beating, feuding. You know, um, you know, my friend, um, I've always. Every time you look into these archives or you look into these articles, unfortunately, man, there is hardly any information. I had just spoken with this with another gentleman just previously. You look into the Long Beach archives, and there's maybe like a little headline: a 16-year-old um, shot in a drive-by, 18-year-old lost his life here on this street corner. And there's hardly not even the name. There's hardly any information, man. But would you be able to tell me? Um, do you have any fallen homeboys, lost homeboys within the city of Long Beach that you, that you lost due to these senseless gang wars? Yeah, you know, um, I actually lost a cousin that one of the Asian boys thought was Rongo. Uh He's a Puerto Rican, Mexican, and he's one of my very close friends that's like my cousin and brother. He got killed in 96 or 97 on the north side of Long Beach. It was him and his girlfriend. It was all over the news. Uh, his last name is Hernandez, Roger Lee Hernandez, and his girlfriend, they got killed with one bullet. They were calling it one bullet killed two lovers and yeah when he died I went crazy you know because that was I started a beef with my hood and some of the Asian boys because we found out it was them so yeah I lost would you I be lost able, a lot of people would you be able to tell me a little more about that man about that situation of, of how that whole little uh, internal conflict entailed as far as uh, with my boy yes man that that sounds uh, unfortunate, man. It yeah, sounds so, like a, a very twisted but interesting situation. So he's Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican and Mexican, and he kicked it with my uncle's. Uh, my uncle used to be from Longo too, so he used to kick it with my uncle. And all the Asian boys know my uncle in the city. They 
with him, though, because, you know, he's Samoan. You have 60 seconds remaining. They knew what he was about, and, well, they seen that dude with him all the time, my boy, and they just figured that he was from Longo, so they, they thought he, they were going to get an easy kill. So, unfortunately, they did. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was just wrong wrong place, wrong time, mistaken identity. But, you know... Would you be able to call me back? Would you like? Yeah, I can call you right back right now. As soon as it, uh, right now, matter of fact. Okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah, well, I lost, I lost a cousin in Orange County. He was out there tripping out and slipped up in a hood where they call lopers. Uh, and they they caught him slipping. He was running from them and he hid under the car and they shot him under the car and killed him. This was probably like 2004 or five, and I just lost two homies probably like a couple of years, maybe seven or eight years ago. They were shot on the freeway right there, and uh, I think the 605. It was on the news too. They found them dead, shot up. There's a lot of there's a lot of them, man. Yeah. You know um. May I ask, um, is there a certain neighborhood out there that, in particular, that the that the SOS really does not get along with? Like you would really call them yeah, like I'll, you guys are the main rivals? Uh, that'll be all the Longos, East Side Longo, West Side Longo, North Side Longo, pretty much. Was there ever a time that that you almost lost your life, man, due to these, these senseless feuds? Yeah, I, I got shot two times when, uh, back in my youthful day when I was out there running the street. I got shot two times. They caught me slipping on the, uh, at a gas station right there on Long Beach Boulevard in Artesia. And I was with my little sister at the time, so I had to jump and cover her. And she was out getting candy coming out the store and then coming out the, from paying for the candy and they just shot up the car. And, so I jumped and saved her, and I got shot three times. Do, do you even know the people who did it? Uh, Yeah, two of them are dead now. But uh, one of them, uh, he's not around. He, he somewhere he probably moved out of state. doesn't live in the city no more. If he does, he's been underground for a while. And there were Longos that did that? Yeah. And you said two. And you said two of them are actually dead now. They ended up getting killed themselves. Yeah, two of them are dead. Yeah. Yep. I guess it's one of those things like you reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Yeah, I mean this lifestyle is not oh. no joke, man. Yeah. Especially, especially if you're shooting at little kids. So, so talk to me, man. Um. You know, um, you said that you, you said that your family was involved with this lifestyle, man. I can only imagine, man, that that you must have seen things, you must have heard things. Is that kind of the, one of the main reasons why you ended up becoming a part of this lifestyle yourself? You no, know, I'm not gonna lie, man. Growing up, this lifestyle fascinated me because I used to see how my mom and my older brothers dressed, how my dad dressed. I used to see the love that he got from all his homies that came over here. They all looked up to him. And, it was just uh, one of them enticing lifestyles. And then growing up, watching all the gang movies and everything, I'm like, damn, I'm living that life, so I might as well just be a part of it now. So, so my dad and mom they didn't want that, that lifestyle for us. They tried to chase us because my dad and them started on the east side. I banged the west. They chased us off the east side, and we went to the west side and got put on. You know, um, do you guys get along, you know, the East and the West? Yeah, we get along. We get along. We're uh, we're all one, but it's just, you know, one side pushes a certain thing, and we push the West side pushes a certain thing. But now there's the East and North and the West. So we're pretty much all SOS at the end of the day. But we still got a little inner rivals, you know, like the West side and the North side the east side, we still be tripping on the side we're from. 
now, now I I know I know before the audience goes crazy on me, I know that Long Beach has always been like a, uh, I guess you would you would want to call it a city, a no blood city. But then, but then I heard something. I, I, I could have heard somewhere that I seen that there might have been one uh, blood Samoan gang. Did you ever hear something about that? You talking about? Yeah, that's Westside Pyro. That started for my cousin stupid ass Dizzy. Uh, his name is Dizzy Rule. He that was just on the computer and the, over the internet thing. Okay, so so that wasn't real at all. Yeah, it wasn't real. It was just over the internet. He was just saying, but but there there will never be no blood in our city. It'll never happen. And there's blood that come from other cities that live there, but they don't bang Long Beach blood. So so, so talk to me, man. Um. You know, um, I, I always think, whenever I think about Long Beach, man, uh, the, the movie Freedom Riders comes up to mind. That's what another inmate that I interviewed, he told me the same thing, man. You know, is it safe to say that it was kind of like that, man? What high school did you go to, bro, man? What was it like? So I went to Jordan, got kicked out of Jordan. I went to Poly, got kicked out of Poly. Then they sent me to San Diego because I couldn't go to L.A. School Unified District. And then I went to San Diego. Wow. I didn't laugh out there either because there was too many bloods out there, so I kept getting into it. So I dropped out around 12th grade, 11th grade, 11th grade. What 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 happened at Jordan and what happened at Poly? Uh, I got into it with some. Well, at, at Jordan, when I went there, I used to play ball and everything. And we after a game, some some dudes from Park Village there from Compton, they were there at the game. And we don't get along with them either. At that time, we weren't getting along. So, uh, yeah, I got into it with them. And one of my homies had a gun, shot, boom. And then uh, my, the principal and them were at that game. And they seen who was right there with me and all that. And they were like, well, you're a part of that. So you can no longer go here because of the gang and had activities that you're involved in. And your boy, which is probably your family or somebody close to you. Bring a gun and shot up the place, so they were tripping on that, and they booted me out. Then I went to Poly, and we had a little race riot. It was the Mexicans against the Asians, Blacks, and the Samoans. They are all, most of them from Longo, and a crew that used to go by TK. TK? Crazy Cook. They're, they're Longo now. They turn Longo now. Was there any, now that you mentioned that, was there any, um, did you guys go, go about it the same way? Was there any type of like Samoan tagging crews or tagging clicks that you know of that eventually ad- were adapted into um, actual neighborhoods? Yeah, Bam Bam, uh, there's, a, there's a hood called Bam This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Yeah, they used to be taggers. They call Long Beach Bam Bam. They Samoans, but they turn the gang now. Oh, it's actually like a real certified hood? Yeah, they're certified. They're Fan Bam. They used to try to push Fan Bam at the West, but we didn't. We don't push with them. Now, now, you said that 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 there is um, you know, obviously you guys are um, somewhat of an alliance with with, with the SCA, with the suicide, with the exotics, with the Asian boys and whatnot. Was it always like that? The the alliance always been there, but they didn't label it SCA until probably like some years back, probably like in around 2007 or eight. That's when they start pushing it because you know we all have the common enemy, and that's PRG and Longo and Body of and all the other gangs that we don't get along, 20 Crip. And then, yeah, they they've always been an alliance because. Uh, Suicidal falls under us. They they're under SOS. Those are click off our hood. So yeah, we always been SOA. We just never pushed it out there until around 2007, 2008. So so so, so talk to me, bro, man. Uh, obviously, man, you went to a lot of these Los Angeles, a lot of these notorious high schools that have always been known. Uh, for riots, for fights, for people getting kicked out. Um, 
you know, and unfortunately, man, it's not uncommon to to be going to these high schools and seeing a classmate end up on a T-shirt. Am, am I right, my friend? Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen it a couple of times, you know. I've seen it a couple of times while I was going to Jordan. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate that you have to see this, you know what I mean? I've done wore so many jerseys and T-shirts with my boy's faces on it. And yeah, it's a lot. Would you be able to tell me about your case, man, um, um, leading up to that day and, 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 you know, how the hell did your whole world turn upside down, man? How, how did you catch this case, brother? What happened? So I was with the homies on the north side. We were at a party. With, uh, it was at a Tonga Soul Life house. There was, they were out there at TFL. We were at their house, and we, cause we get along, you know, we have common enemies, too, so. We we keep to click up and get along with each other. Well, anyway, I'm at a party. I'm fresh out of prison, you know, doing my thing. And then the enemies drove up. Uh, There's about five of them that hopped out of truck. And then we started squabbling down, started fighting. And then next thing you know, somebody shoots into the crowd, and we chase down. We chase down one of the messes, and he got caught flipping. And the rest of his homies took off in the truck. They left him behind. So I ended up snapping him, you know, because out of, out of the group, I was uh, probably the fastest out of the group. So I ended up catching him, slammed him down to the ground, whooped his ass, and then I just went, I snapped. I just snapped. I just cut his ear off. Uh, yeah, so that's what happened. I basically did, oh, there's a gang of the homies that were involved with. I took the rap for all the things that I did. Then after that, we went on a little robbing spree and it just went crazy. It was just, it was just one of them nights, man. We didn't go right and everything went wrong. Did the individual survive? Yeah, he survived. He survived. Uh, it was just, He's out there right now. He's... May I ask, how, how did you get caught, bro? Well, uh, when I went to go rob this dude at the gas station, he called the cops, and I let him go, but he called the cops, and then, uh, uh, the cops came and pulled up on us as we were hopping in the car, and, you know, I had to throw away the gun and do what I had to do, but they were not me, so they were like, Get out the car. They searched us. And they seen all the blood on me and everything. And they're like, uh, he took the description. Then it finds out the neighbors that were uh, in that alley where, where I got the other dude that they seen me, gave a description. In a little bit. Yeah, and then, uh, yup, they pointed me out in the lineup. And here I am now, years later. At the time, I got railroaded with a public defender. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't do nothing about that. But yeah, he he tried to represent me and he told me I had to take a deal or they're gonna wash me up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no, just uh, the number. You have 60 seconds remaining. So where did you end up seeing out to my friend? How much time did you end up getting? I got 19 years. And seven months, but then I caught six more years in here. So, or well, four more years, should I say? Four more years in here. Oh man, man um, if you don't mind me asking, bro, how the heck did you catch six more years? And then four. Uh, weapons possession, weapons possession, and uh, drugs. Oh man, that's very unfortunate, man. Very yeah. unfortunate, man. You, you know, you know, I got a question. Um, you said that you, you guys are um, the Sun Samoas are Crips, right? Yes, sir. Now, when when you guys yes, hit sir. the county jail, when when you guys hit the county jail, when you guys hit the prison system, um, let's just say the Crips, the African Americans, they get into a, an, an incident with the Hispanics. 
do you guys vote as one unit as Crips or do you guys vote as a unit as Asian? Like, how does that work? So, for me, I ran with the Crips uh, because I banned Crip and Cripping came from Blacks. So, I, I chose to go ahead and honor what I banged. But even though my hood is Samoans, but we're predominantly Samoans, there's Blacks and Mexicans and Whites from our hood, too. So, I just pushed with the homies as far as the Crips. So then I ran with them for the first nine years. But after that, that's when I went ahead and started running with the others, which is the Asians, Islanders, uh, Puerto Ricans, and Latin Hispanics that are not Southsiders and Pisces. Has there ever been a situation where you had to choose between, uh, you know, rolling with the Samoans or, or the Asians and um, or going with the Crips? Yeah, well, when I hit the county, they're, they're, they're pretty much... The Samoans were like, you know, you're from Samoa, you're this, you're that, you're supposed to be with your people. I was like, well, I'm a Crip. And, you know, I bang Crip, and this is what I'm going to run. So, other than that, I don't know what to tell y'all. So, I made my own decision, and I did what I did for nine years. From the county, counting the county and everything was 11 years, but nine years with them. But then it just started getting cutthroat amongst my own people. So, I just went told them, you know, I'm cool with you guys because you guys are backstabbing each other, lying, plotting, doing stupid, and we're supposed to be homies. I don't do that. So I went with the Samoans and the Asians after that. Okay, so let me see. Uh, I I actually got removed, you know. I actually got removed for doing business with the Southsiders and, and the Blacks because I was running with the others. And I got removed uh, in Kern Valley, actually, where uh, – we were bringing in stuff from the streets, and I was responsible for collecting and picking up and dropping off. And I fumbled the ball, and the homies were, they weren't having that, you know, because it was the South Siders, it was the Mexicans, the Southern Mexicans, and the Bloods, the Crips that were involved in paying for stuff. And I was the dude that was supposed to get everything, and I didn't do what I was supposed to do, so they removed me from the line. Were weapons involved? Oh uh, yeah, I got hit three times. Uh, went to the hospital and uh, a riot hit. A riot happened because it started in the kitchen and yeah, weapons were involved. Oh uh, well, if I have one thing to say, all I can say is that um, gang banging ain't what it used to be, and gang banging ain't nothing no more. And it ain't all, it ain't, you know what I mean, it ain't something that I would do again, for sure. Um, you know, it ain't did nothing but take away my life, man. I've been spending all my life behind these bars, and that's what gang banging basically got me, you know what I mean? I made the decisions, but, you know, ultimately it's just due to gang banging and proving myself. And I wouldn't wish this on nobody, man, you know. Uh, prison ain't cool, and the streets is cruel. But you ain't got a game bang and shoot it up like that, man. You need to do what, what you're supposed to do. And that's be a man by yourself, stand your ground, and do you, man. And that's what I'm doing now. And that's what I've learned over all these years, you know. You ain't got to be afraid to be alone because uh, at the end, you know, you're never alone. But you don't got to join a gang to, to prove that you're somebody or you want to be somebody. You can just be you, man, and live life, man. That's all it is, man. Just live life. Don't let life live you, man. That's all I can say, man. You know, thank you so much for, for t taking the time out of there and sharing your story. All right, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.